to, to be truthful, I spent in the UK almost two years. And okay. it was the worst two years I ever had in my life. Uh, people have imaginations that people are having such a high quality life uh, in the UK. But from my experience, it was completely different. Truthful, France isn't great either. France, mm -hmm. if, if there are people watching me right now thinking that uh, Europe has uh, mm. a, a good life they are uh, they are mistaken because yes on paper yes they get more money for work yes on paper they earn more but in reality food is more expensive rent is more expensive everything is expensive Guys, I welcome you live on SVTV International. My name is DJ Nyame. If you just chance on our channel, you are welcome on board. This platform too is open to you guys or wherever you are across the world. You can come on and let's have a vibe. Whatever is happening around you, it's open, Charlie. So um, today I'm going to have a chat. I'm going where? I'm going to Rwanda. First time. I'm going to have a chat with a uh, asylum seeker uh, to ask him from the UK. Okay, so we all know this um, uh, UK moving asylum seekers to Rwanda. So I have a first guy who is there on my show to ask him how is the place and then also uh, let's get to know him uh how he got to the uk illegal whether legal or illegal let's get to know i mean so have sasha on my show sasha welcome you live how are you doing uh, not too bad not too bad what about you okay i'm also good i'm also good currently you are in rwanda right rwanda refugee camp yes that's right oh, oh okay how long have you been there only a couple of days. I only arrived uh, last week. Uh, it was quite late at night. It was all dark, but when I woke up the next day, it was sunny, it was warm. Uh, it is so much better than in the UK. UK clouds, rain, cold all the time. And people say UK is so nice to live in. But to, to be truthful, I spent in the UK almost two years. And okay. it was the worst two years I ever had in my life. It was cold. It was uh, rain. Uh, people very sad walking down the streets. Uh, people have imaginations that people are having such a high quality life uh, in the UK. But from my experience, it was completely different. Uh, we, I was in France, in Calais, and I risked my own life uh, to get on a boat because people felt for, people were saying that UK is so much better than France. And people were saying, if you go there, it will be so much better. It's going to be heaven on earth. Okay. I mean, you say you went to France, and then uh, why did you stay in France, then you moved to the UK? Uh, I'm not sh sure that you heard about the jungle in Calais. So mm. it's a big, big refugee camp for uh, people mm. that are seeking better lives. And mm. conditions there weren't too great. Uh, uh, crime, uh, very dangerous. Uh, people were dying. People went missing. So mm. we, I, I and many of my friends... Uh, we try to get uh, uh, to a better place, uh, uh, but mm. to be truthful, to be truthful, France isn't great either. France, mm. if, if there are people watching me right now thinking that uh, Europe has uh, mm. a, a good life, they are, uh, they are mistaken because, yes, on paper, Yes, they get more money for work. Yes, on paper, they earn more. But in reality, food is more expensive. Rent is more expensive. Everything is expensive. And at the end of the day, they don't have better lives. I've seen French people uh, going to food banks. Do you know what the food bank is? People yeah. that cannot afford... Uh, uh, to put uh, food on the table are going to food banks and I've seen French people using food banks. Then once I arrived to the UK, I've seen British people using food banks because they also couldn't afford 
uh, the food. Uh, statistically, every fifth British person is living below poverty line and people don't even know. People think that once they go to Britain, once they go to France, uh, there is no poverty, there is no hungry, uh, people living f fantastic lives, but reality is different. Mm -hmm. uh, so what was your intention? I mean, leaving um, uh, France to UK, what you had? I mean, maybe you heard that UK is good and all that. That's why you moved from France to the UK. And when you got there, you said it's not what you expected, right? It's not. It's not. No. Mm. Mm. For how long have you been in the UK? You said two years. I remember almost, you said two years, almost right? Almost two years. It was one year and almost 11 months. Years. So one, you were in the country. One year 11 months, yes. One year 11 months? Yes. So you were in the camp, right? A refuge, no, government, UK government was renting hotels and they were okay. they were putting us to them hotels and some of them were very nice hotels, four or five star hotels and because there wasn't enough room for everyone, then they tried to make a boat, a boat in London and they were trying to pe put people to this uh, big boat, but then they realized that it's not safe. Mm. Okay, so um, are you part of the uh, first batch they moved you guys to? Yes, the, yes. To you might know me. You might know me from TikTok where I say that I'm the first one, but I was actually in a group. I was actually in a group. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. So I mean, before they they pass this bill that uh, they are moving you guys to Rwanda. What was the feeling like? I mean, I'm not sure you've been to Rwanda before. So what came in mind? Uh, people think that Africa is poor. People think that Africa has uh, uh, only poverty and hunger. But uh, from what I've seen, oh, I only tell you that I'm here only for a few days. But from what I see, people live better lives. People live better mm -hmm. lives. Uh, the only mm, why do you people, say why do you say people live better lives? What have you seen so far in the few days? People are smiling. People are smiling. Mm. People seem to be happy. Uh, whereas whenever I was in the UK, people were walking sad. People were walking mm. sad. Yes. Mm. Mm. Okay. So when uh, the bill was passed that they are moving you guys to Rwanda, I mean, what was your reaction? Did you? kind of like say oh no i don't want to go and then why Rwanda? because we we uh, hear in the I news that only, some people don't want to i can only tell you about myself i yes, can you tell, tell you about myself because what others mm. were thinking that's them that's them but mm. i was very depressed the, that time that i was in the uk was the worst time i uh, had in my life and mm -hmm. I told myself, if there's going to be opportunity to leave this sad place, I'm going to be the first one because it's not a good place. Th mm -hmm. there, was, uh, uh, th there was nothing to do. There was no opportunities. If you are a refugee, they are not allowing you to work. You have to stay in your hotel and you don't do anything for two mm. years. You can't work. And for someone that likes to work, it's awful. It's awful, yes. So what, what, what was the agreement? Were you giving some money or something to, to move? Yes, the agreement was that you get one off payment of £3,000. And you also get five years guaranteed accommodation in a Rwanda refugee camp. That's mm. the agreement. And okay. you are provided with food. You are provided with uh, everything you need to, to be alive for five years. Mm. Mm. So you are going to stay in Rwanda for five years, right? That was the agreement. Uh, that's the agreement, but... Uh, uh, you are not like in prison, you know, you are not uh, there and you have to stay there. You are a free person. If you mm. decide that uh, you can have a better uh, life elsewhere, you can move. It's not like they, they, they make you stay for five years. You can do whatever you want.
Mm. I've seen some few videos that people say, oh, uh, they don't want to come to Rwanda. Uh, let, let, tell us, I mean, your first badge, what was their reaction? I mean, uh, coming to Rwanda, is it like they said, okay, no, I want to move out from the UK. I mean, you were there with people. So, I mean, I'm sure what are some of the things you guys, they were telling each other and all that. Oh, I want to, I'm fed up in the UK. I want to come to Rwanda. I mean, how was it like? Uh, many people don't want to go back to Rwanda because they mm -hmm. think it's dangerous. They think uh, it's not safe. There is no mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what I see, it's not true. The only people that are struggling in Rwanda are those who don't work. But if you work, mm -hmm. you live normal life. So mm. I think they have a wrong misconception in their head that Rwanda is a bad place. But mm. uh, you need to keep in mind that Rwanda uh, has special agreement with the UK. There is a lot of investments and money going into the country. So uh, to be truthful, you can use uh, the money they give you to open up your own uh, business. You can uh, buy a piece of land. You can uh, grow uh, vegetables. You can sell it. Uh, you can do so many things with it. So uh, I think that if someone is smart, they can actually have a better life in Rwanda because uh, you probably know yourself as an African person that uh, uh, a lot of things are waiting to start. Uh, there is a lot of resources, there is a lot of land. The only thing that uh, is needed is investors to start it. Uh, UK, there is no opportunities because uh, land is very expensive. <laughs> Um, uh, taxes are very high. Uh, there is a lot of competition. Uh, labor, if you want to hire someone, it's uh, very expensive because you are not only paying the salary, you are also paying a lot of taxes, uh, national insurance for their health. Uh, so at the end of the day, when I was in the UK, I've mm -hmm. seen a lot of businesses shutting down. You were going down the street of the city center and businesses were closing. Uh, people were going out of business because they couldn't afford taxes. They couldn't afford the rent. And people think that everyone in the UK has living lovely lives and there is no problems. But my eyes see something else. Mm. So now, uh, Sasha, if now the UK government says, OK, we want to bring you back to the UK and uh, I mean, we'll give you papers, move freely, go and work. Are you not going back? Uh, to the UK? Yeah, to the UK. I don't plan to go to the UK. What I can tell you is that I might consider going to other places, but definitely not the UK. Uh, UK, Why? I mm. think that whenever Brexit happened, this country is over. This country is over because mm. do you know why UK uh, has been uh, back in the day a great empire? Do you know why? No, because, I don't know. Tell us. Because of colonialism, because mm. of slavery. And uh, slavery is finished. Colonialism days are over. Canada, Australia, everything is now independent. So money stopped going in. There is, back in the day, Britain was very uh, prosperous country because money was coming in from Australia, from, mm. uh, they had 11 states in the USA. They had uh, Australia, they had New Zealand, they had India. India used to be part of British empire and they were making things and all the money was going in back to Britain. But no longer, it doesn't happen anymore. So if you look up what uh, they actually produce in the UK, uh, they, they actually make less things than 50 years ago. 50 years ago, they were producing more things and they were selling them than today. Uh, factories are shutting down. 
Uh, mm. They are moving those factories uh, to other countries in Europe because it's uh, not cost effective, you know, because Brexit, they have to pay more taxes uh, and it is more convenient. I'm not sure if you heard about company Tata Motors, Tata. It's a very big company, one of the biggest companies. There was Tata that was uh, manufacturing steel in the UK and mm. it shut down. It shut down tens of thousands of people is now without jobs in the UK because Tata moved to other countries because other countries have lower taxes. They can mm. have a better business in other countries than in the UK. Uh, so it happens with the rest as well. It's just a matter of time. UK, if they don't do something very quickly, this country will be one of the poorest in Europe. Mm. Do you say, are you saying you you regret going to the UK? Pep, what's Pep, very what you are saying? So. Like, very much so. It was the worst decision I ever made. Mm. It was the worst Indeed. decision I ever made. You never knew all these things until you got there, right, Pep? What yes. you are saying? Yes. I had imagination that it's a good place. But once I get there, you know the way you have uh, certain expectations and none of them expectations were actually fulfilled because I was thinking in my mind that once I get there, I will have a job, I will buy a house, I will have a car, I will have a family. But uh, I was watching local British people struggling to pay rent. I was watching British people that lived their, their whole lives uh, not being able to afford basic things. Um, and uh, what can a refugee afford? You know, someone that is there their whole life has more opportunities than someone that is only through the door. And so if they struggle, then you will struggle even more. Mm. Mm. Let's talk about Rwanda. I mean, you've been there for the uh, past few days. I mean, what have you seen so far? Uh, and uh, how many are you? How many, the first batch, how many are you there? Uh, you there was a, a few dozen. There was a few dozen people coming mm -hmm. on. It was um, a commercial plane. It wasn't mm -hmm. a plane charter. It was commercial okay. plane. And we got tickets and we flew commercial with other passengers uh, on board. Mm. Okay, so tell us now, you have been there for these past few days. I mean, how do you see Rwanda? Uh, I mean, the treatment so far. Um, have you been out? I mean, see the town and all that. I mean, tell us. Uh, to be truthful, uh, the refugee camp is not in a city center. It's actually um, far from the city. So... Uh, the only way to get to the city is uh, by car. And unfortunately, we couldn't get one yet. Uh, and there is no uh, good uh, public transportation from here. So unfortunately, the transport um, uh, is the problem to get to see the country. But I mm. think it's just a matter of time until we, we go and see. Yes, but mm. the, the refugee camp itself is, uh, is far better than uh, what there was in the UK. Far better. Oh, okay. What about uh, the food and all that? I mean, are they treating you well? Food is good, uh, and to be truthful, um, British food is tasteless. You know, you <laughs> eat it and there is no taste. Uh, you eat meat, you eat meat, and it doesn't taste like meat. From the way you are talking, it looks like you now you don't like anything, anything British. <laughs> no, because there is nothing to like. There is nothing to like. Uh, and uh, to be truthful, once we got the food here in Rwanda, everything has a taste. Everything is naturally grown. You know, food in the UK, supermarkets, everything is artificial. Everything is, uh, 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 they add hormones 
to grow it bigger. And uh, maybe it is bigger and it's very good in appearance, but uh, doesn't have the same taste. Uh, even an apple, you know, you buy an apple in the UK and it looks so nice and red and all, but it doesn't have any taste, doesn't have any taste. And here in Rwanda, everything is grow locally and it has a very good taste. Fish is very good. Uh, um, to be truthful, they give us um, fish every day. I don't know if it's a tradition or what, but there is fish every day. You get three square meal a day. If you are hungry in between the meals, there is always something, you know. So if you are hungry, you can come to the kitchen. They will give you something. Oh, I see. I see. But aside that, I, I mean, the refugees camp, uh, you move around and all that. You see um, your other colleagues there, right? Yes, yes. So what are some of the things uh, they tell you? I mean, you guys discuss. Do, uh, do uh, some people, of them do some of them say, "Oh, maybe I regret coming here. I wish I didn't come, and all that." I mean, what are some of the things that you guys discuss there? The only thing I heard so far is uh, that uh, although all the time that we've spent in the UK in Britain was wasted, that's our common. Um, that's how we feel that we haven't gained anything really. You know, the way we thought that maybe there, there's going to be education, there's going to be maybe work opportunities, maybe we will learn the trade. But uh, yes, they were providing accommodations, uh, they were providing food, but there was nothing else. Uh, the, we couldn't learn anything, we couldn't uh, gain any experience. So it was a wasted time, really. Because people mm. were hoping, people were hoping that once they grant us asylum and once uh, we are, you know, granted permission to stay in the UK, then we can start uh, um, having um, work. Maybe we will start, um, you know, some some future here. But no one got any. Um, uh, it's called. Uh, uh, settlement. No one, no one got settlement, and uh, the time was really wasted. Mm, mm. Now you have your thousand pounds with you. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure you are going to buy anything because they give you food. Uh, what about uh, clothing and all that? So uh, your money is with you, right? Yes, yes. So mm, uh, you are not spending anything. Uh, only few pounds at the airport. Only few pounds at the airport. Uh, you know mm. the way. Uh, you can't bring any water with you on the airport, so I had to buy myself uh, water. But uh, uh, no, I, I don't really spend much money here uh, in a camp, no. What, what, what and what do you have? You have free Wi-Fi, you have um, uh, what and what? Uh, electricity, everything is available, everything right? Provided we don't pay anything, uh, no. Mm. Wow. What, so what are you telling those who are in the UK that they don't want to come? People are saying, some people are saying they don't want to come to Rwanda. Yes, because they have wrong picture. They think Rwanda is poor. They think there is no money, there is no jobs. Uh, but uh, from what I can tell, there is more here than in the UK. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, uh, Sasha, thank you so much for coming on my show. Do you have anything to say? Any last words? Um, I can only tell from my heart to yes. make the potential um, asylum seekers that are thinking about uh, going to Rwanda that there is nothing to be afraid of. And if you think that the UK is uh, mm, uh, a place of opportunities, uh, open your eyes, open your eyes, mm. because there is no, no opportunities for people like us. There, there are opportunities in the UK for certain people, people with money, people with uh, connections. Rishi Sunak, prime minister of UK, is one of the richest people on earth, billionaire, billions of pounds. And you can ask yourself, if you have so much money, why would you even bother becoming a prime minister? 
why would you even bother becoming a prime minister? Prime minister only earns 100,000 pounds a year and he has billions of pounds, billions. Why would you even bother? Sasha, thank you so much for coming on my show, okay? Enjoy your stay in Africa. Thank you so thank much. You. Uh, guys, you heard from Sasha live on SBTV International. Uh, he's part of the first badge uh, uh, to be sent from the UK to Rwanda. I mean, he has said a lot. Uh, I'll just thank him for coming on my show. You heard from him. My name is DJ Nyame. If you want to come on my show, uh, wherever you are, my numbers are on the screen. Just WhatsApp me or send me a voice note. Let's have a vibe. Thank you so much, guys. I'll thank my production team. Big ups. Subscribe to our channel for more. Peace out.